Tragedy has struck the cigars of Valor Studios. Let me tell you something. Is that good? It's good to me. How's the angle? Um, it's good to me. I don't know. Here we are. Number 13. Number 13. Lucky number, right? Mm. Hey! <laughs> that was weird. All right, so this time we're going to try to add a little bit of structure to the podcast. Oh, yeah, I forgot we wrote all that. Yeah, that. I took some notes about certain things. <laughs> God, that looks like shit. <laughs> and that's all, folks. Thanks for turning in. Nobody cares. Everyone knows we've already lost our minds. Hence the dinosaur. Fuck. All right. Come here, motherfucker. You old piece of shit. All right. Everyone sit the fuck down. Shut the fuck up. Let me tell you something. It's good to work here. Do we want the other white on? Uh, should we? Yeah, let's go in that the other light. BRB. There we go. Made no difference. So we go. Shut up. It's the effort that counts. Uh. All right. So now that the mics are working this week. Let me tell you something. What? I do enjoy that there is less idiots on the road, but the quality of idiot has increased. <laughs> so it's just as fucking bad. All right. So I'm assuming that you'd like a cigar. Correct. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. I gotta pin it on me like that. The cover? The cover. You know, I have not smoked one of these in a, in a little while. It has been a minute, of several minutes. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I know directly I will not be able to talk very much. Why is that? After doing that cough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I understand. It's all right. Son of a bitch. I don't know why I flinched there. That was weird. What? I flinched. I... Nobody noticed. Nobody cares. Nobody noticed. All right, listen here. We're going to get in a fucking positive state of mind for this goddamn podcast. Or someone will die. I'm not the one in a negative mindset. Shut up. I was playing Far Cry 5. <laughs> oh, God. You know, my favorite part is the end of that game. Mm -hmm. Beautiful game. Mm -hmm. Really cool. I like the cult. Probably join. Fuck! Ah!
touch the 9,000 degree flame. How did that feel? Uh, not that bad, actually. <laughs> How much did that fucking didgeridoo cost? I can't remember. I ordered it like five fucking years ago. It's expensive. Fuck. All right. So, as we all know that this is our 13th podcast. And uh, is this the last podcast of the year? Or is next week going to be the last podcast of the year? Let me tell you something. Which one? What day is New Year's on? Sunday? I don't keep up with that shit. I don't know. Monday? I don't fucking know. Sunday? Why did all the holidays have to land on a weekend? I don't fucking know. This is how they did. It's not just how they did it. It's bullshit. It means we can't <laughs> actually get days off from work. It's all right. I get days off. Um, we'll head today off. Yeah, right. That's why we're here a little ahead of schedule, a little earlier. So let me uh, pull up some notes here about what we're going to talk about today. Sure. Let's give you a rundown. Why don't you go and tell the, the non-existent crowd what you're going to do this weekend? For Christmas? Sure, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. let me fill you in. Um, what I'm going to do this weekend is, I don't know. All that for, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Probably going over to uh, Brittany's parents. Ah, there you go. Do Christmas over there and... Sure. Uh, there's nothing else. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As usual, we have nothing to talk about. What are some of the things that you have? Well, here that looks... I sent you. <laughs> <laughs> Not even notes. No, I just keep in track. Uh, what, what was the first one? The art and craft of cigar smoking. Oh. Smoking or making? Both. Okay. So making a cigar, there's a lot of art, a lot of talent, a lot of expertise that goes into that. Mm -hmm. Would you like to know some of it? Would you okay. like to I'm, I'm, No one's there. Anyways. Yeah, no one's there. Yeah, You're yeah. talking to the Fuck fucking off. wall. Piece of shit. If you watch this, don't even comment. We'll know you're watching. Yeah. So here's the deal. Um, the art of cigar making... It's, there's quite a lot of steps to it. Is like there? A lot of steps. Um, How so? Anywhere from, you know, growing the little fucking flower to get the seeds, then putting the seeds, growing the seeds out of the soil, then planting the little, the little sapling that grows into the soil, then growing a full on fucking tobacco plant, then harvesting it, then aging it. You know, or sorry, curing it, hulsing it upside down for a known period of time in a curing barn, and harvest, then uh, fermenting, then aging, then rolling, and there's like a whole fucking Jesus. Yeah, uh, the the fact that you can get a cigar for ten dollars once you see the process involved of making one is mind blowing. It is fantastic. Um, there's a few, there's a lot of videos out there on the social media and the intraweb and the twatter sphere that mm -hmm. will educate you greatly on the process. Um, it's just amazing how they were able to perfect that, master that, tet this process over God knows how long we've been smoking tobacco as humans. Um, it's really fantastic. Um, <clears throat> 
Um, it, it's all important. There's not one spot that they can you know, skimp out on and make up for another spot. No, they're all equally important. Hmm. Uh, such as if you harvest too early, obviously there's issues with that. If you don't cure it long enough, there's obviously issues with that. If you don't ferment it, there's definitely going to be fucking issues with that one. Wasn't there issues with if it rained too much that yeah, year? Sure. And it has different variables. I, uh, I couldn't go through the list of everything that can go wrong with it if it rains too much because there's a lot that can go wrong. You can get blue mold. It's a mold that grows across the, the soil. I mean, and that can, and doesn't that ruin every, it, like yeah. all the whole entire? Yeah, it can destroy your entire crop. Wow, that's devastating. That's blue. why. Uh, but you now there are benefits to a wet season. Usually, you're if you don't if you can control the blue mold, your your crop will grow faster hmm. and larger because of the moisture. I mean, it has more to more moisture to feed off of, and it, and it's uh, if it's a dry season or wet season can dictate how a cigar tastes too. Really. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But the important part, the most fascinating part of making a cigar is, I want to say, the fermentation process. Mm -hmm. They say they take the leaves and stack them in this big pile, mm -hmm. and they're like in a crate, and they let them sit for God knows how long. And they were taking temperatures of the inside of the stack, mm -hmm. 121 degrees. What's the external temperature? Um, like... Why, why is it they're drying in the sun? No, they're it's them fermenting. It's the sugars and shit act. Oh, the bacteria is causing the heat like yeah. that? Wow. And then once they let it ferment it for a certain period of time, then they throw it. Um, I'm missing a spot. I'm missing a section. It goes curing, fermentation. Um, I want to say that they roll it, then age it, or age it, then roll it. I can't remember how it goes. No. Well, if you if you aged it, wouldn't that dry it out to where you couldn't do if it's, it? If it's not in the proper setting, yeah, sure. Well, because you remember House of Cigars, they would they would put the uh, they put those leaves up and they'd age the leaves. Remember? Yeah. But wouldn't if it was aged a long time, wouldn't the leaf then become to if it's uh, being aged in the proper setting, such as proper humidity and proper temperature, it won't. Okay. So if it's aged in a setting like what we're in right now, where it's 30 fucking degrees outside, that'll fuck it up. You know, I bet you they age the, the wrapper. And then, well, I'm sure on the filler too. Yeah, everything's but, aged. But I, I, I vaguely remember a cigar being the, the wrapper was aged. Mm -hmm. So I bet, I bet you they just, you know, but a lot of those guys, they just stack them on pallets and then throw them under a blanket yeah. inside of a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, huge warehouse there's a uh, plenty of videos on youtube about that whole process of making a cigar that is really fascinating yeah and it gives you a good perspective on what goes into making one of these mm -hmm. and why there's such a culture behind it interesting so uh I'm, it's and you know there's a uh, different regions all around the world that you can grow tobacco in and it's similar to the coffee belt there's the coffee belt around the world it's very similar to those regions basically anywhere along the equator didn't you mention something last week about coffee and yeah tobacco? there's some uh farms that i'm not going to disclose who that in the off season after they've harvested they'll grow coffee really out of the same soil. I'm not going to say who, but it has its pros and cons. Yeah, sure, you can make fucking coffee. But it also brings on a different, whole different uh, crew of pests and issues. Really? That you have to eradicate. Fascinating. Yes. Fascinating. Well, I think it's time to get on to the next segment mm -hmm. with... The badass of the week. Yes. The badass of the week this week will be Larry Vickers. From what did he do? Hmm? Did he bicker a bunch of people? No, Vicker, not Vicker. Okay. With a V. All right. So 
Larry Vickers. Bronze Star Medalist in the U.S. Army. Okay. Army Special Forces. All right. Went on to Delta Force. Okay. Uh, participated in oper- you know, Acid Gambit, Operation Desert Storm, a few other. Op- I think he did Panama as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a big pioneer of uh, a certain weapon system called the CAR-15. Oh. Uh, he has, there's the Larry Vickers CAR-15 out there. Nice. But it's a very old school Gucci mm-hmm. AR platform. Uh, it has the carry handle with an optic on top of it. It has a light at the end of it. It's just very old school. All right. So do we Larry work? Hoover. So the mics are working. Uh, yeah, I see it. All right, Larry Vickers. Sorry, we had to erupt, disrupt that. But we're back. So Larry Vickers, he, uh, from Ohio. <coughs> He's from Ohio, U.S. Army, Delta Force, Special Forces. What the <laughs> fuck are you doing? I don't know where the fuck he's from. I look over here and just... Okay. So he uh, retired from the military, started uh, his own little tactical company, like Victor's Tactical or something like that. Um, he's just an all around American badass. It's, uh... Sounds like it. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. So what do you want to touch on next? You had something on your mind. Oh, man. Let's, uh, let's touch on a few things. You, as the viewer, comment on the video. We're waiting. <coughs> but yes, I want to touch on. Actually, I want to bitch about. All right. The stupidity. God damn it. The stupidity of the citizens of DFW. Yeah. I didn't. Okay. So I don't think I've said this yet. I probably did, but Mm -hmm. I don't think um, for a long time, I thought that the majority of people had an opinion of knowing that shit's not right. Shit's not being run right. Uh, There's a lot of corruption in a sense, not directly for police officers, Mm -hmm. but in the higher up shit. Mm -hmm. Uh, they like to make you think that it's police officers who are just normal fucking people, 99% of them. And there's like one asshole every now and then, but the majority are good people and they have to fight through all that fucking bullshit. Every single family fucking disorderly conduct, fucking domestic violence, bullshit that half of these fucking retards, uh, put them through. They have to go through it and deal with it. So they deal with everyone's shit. That goes beyond like, you know, the law or up to where it breaks the law. They have to deal with all that shit. And then they get told that they're the problem. Mm -hmm. When in reality, you're the problem. But it's not my point here. My point is that the structure of this city is (laughs) fucked. (laughs) And that you're the problem. (laughs) people, People need to realize That if they don't get a fucking grip, everything is going to go. We're going to lose everything. Eventually, it's going to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And it's already getting to that point. Now, I don't don't agree on living your life in fear and all that bullshit. But people are just allowing this to occur. They don't care. Politicians go and build these huge fucking highways and charge you $30 every time you drive on them. You don't give a shit. Nobody cares. And... uh, so, yeah, I forgot where I was going with this, but I just wanted to call people stupid. 
Probably none of the people that watch this. I think you succeeded in that greatly. None of the people that watch this are retarded, so we've just been in an echo chamber. Oh, yeah, let me get back to my point. I got my point here. I was watching this fishing video. Okay. And I don't remember <laughs> what? I don't remember what kind of fishing video it was. But at that moment that I read the comments, I realized that 90% of the general public is brainwashed and fucking stupid. 90%. It's because I've been in an echo chamber on social media and I had some sort of little drop of fucking hope that people were not fucked. And they are. They are. 90% of people are retarded. 90%. There's 10%, and that's probably the people that watch this and that smoke cigars and stuff. They're not retarded. I'm sure there's a couple that are, but it's... We socialize with people like ourselves. And unfortunately, we are a minority. So, that being said, the militia is coming. I don't know why I said that. I was just fucking around. Not actually. What are you doing? You're going to chime in? I'm thinking what to chime <laughs> Okay. I thought you were like bored or something. <laughs> So that being said, like Far Cry 5, we are creating a cult. No, no, not a cult like that. That cult was fucked up. They did kill cops. Yeah, fuck that cult. (laughs) Fuck (laughs) them. I actively drove around. Did you beat that game? I just killed John Seed, whatever the fuck his name is. Oh, John Seed. Where do you have to fly the airplane and get him? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, But anyway, okay. So when you. That's fucking stupid. Dude. Engage with the story and enjoy the story because when you see the end, it blows your fucking mind. The game is insane. Like you, you'll you'll end it and you'll be like, "Damn!" Like it's really cool. The ending is amazing. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's a good game. Very fun it, game. It really is. It's a there's game. some missions that are a little harder than others, and it infuriates the fuck out of me. Where I have to take endless shots of whiskey while I'm playing it. Hmm. But it is a fun game. If you're not familiar with the video game, it's about, uh, I won't give any spoilers to Travis, but it's about a cult that takes over some town and you're a, a, what, a state trooper? or uh, a deputy, sheriff's deputy. Yeah, you're a sheriff's deputy. And you go into the town to help out the police force or something mm-hmm. like that because they asked for help and it turns out there's a big fucking mess. And it's based in Montana. Yeah, it uh, turns out a cult has taken over this county in Montana. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, and uh, your mission is to liberate it is really cool too how like all the characters are super patriotic hell yeah <laughs> it's really cool uh you go in there and you basically do a little bit of guerrilla warfare throughout the game and you're destroying supply trucks fuel trucks mm-hmm. you're taking over airfields destroying them i love that shit that's fantastic yeah the game's fun um so i've been uh i kind of wormholed into this game about a week ago and i haven't stopped playing it um uh, there's been three welfare checks con- conducted on me at this point. I literally just walked myself into my. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I'm, kidding. I'm fucking kidding. I do have to go to work every now and again, then I come back and play the game. Mm. Oh, yeah, then I, I forgot to feed the dogs last time. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Fuck. <laughs> oh, God. No. No, I play the game whenever I get a chance. Um, because I was playing Microsoft Flight Simulator, but that game is such a fucking piece of shit. Calling me out, Microsoft. It does play like shit. It's fucking horrible. It crashes every goddamn five seconds. Not the airplanes, but the game itself. Are you sure it's not the airplane? When the screen goes black and takes a <laughs> yeah. the desktop, that's the game, right? Yeah. Yeah. I so uh, I had a crash a couple times. I know I, I took off in a 747 mm-hmm. at uh, Love Field. I barely fucking made it, and then I. That's yeah, uh, a fucking. Short <laughs> and then I landed in Mesquite, Peninsula. So, for those of you that don't know what the fuck we're talking about, he took off in a 747 jumbo jet from Love Field, which is barely, which is mainly long enough for 737s and some light aircraft to take off from. He's taking off with a jumbo jet. You mm-hmm. need a seven thousand foot long runway for that thing. It fucking flies good. Sure, after you take off. The the commercial airliners fly really good in that game. Yeah, there's so much automation in them. They yeah. fly so good. And you're flying the Cessna, it's like... 
and then you turn and it falls fucking 300 feet just from you turning a little bit. You know, I don't have that issue. I don't don't fucking know, okay? There's like a little hole in the window or something. What? I don't remember. I was flying some little plane. It had a little fucking hole in the window to let air in. And the fucking thing wouldn't fly over like 3,000 feet. I don't know. This is a piece of shit. All right. I I didn't want to buy a $149 fucking aircraft to fly. I just wanted to fly the one that was there. I understand. So let's get back to cigars. Okay. Would you associate cigars with tradition? Do you think a lot of traditions have cigars involved with them? Well, yeah. Many people associate cigars with um, like a success. You know, like there's a yeah, victory. Yeah, victory. Mm-hmm. The, the the term, but no cigar. You know, like yeah, sure. It was successful, no cigar or some shit. Um, and people associate it with that, and I don't really know why. But I think it just it has a. It forces you to slow down after the victory, and it forces you to enjoy it. You know, when I was watching an Andrew Tate video. He was talking about earning the right to smoke a cigar Hmm. and that like, cause they smoke cigars in their podcasts Mm -hmm. and stuff. And he was like, you got to earn the right. And so, yeah, I I think many people that, that smoke cigars, um, Mm -hmm. they really connect with the value of it, the relaxation, the the ability to unwind, even though it's extremely difficult. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think uh, I think the people that do smoke regularly yeah. understand that mm-hmm. and do associate with that, and that's why they're popular among them. And then I think the people that don't really care for cigars and know nothing about them have no idea what the um, you know other than like medical conditions, but like sure. people that just don't understand how great a cigar is to have at the end of the week and you've worked really hard. And, it's like having a, a stout beer after doing a huge day of like hard labor. Sure. Yeah. It's like that. Like it doesn't taste good any other time, but when your ass is kicked, like it's kind of good. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I never drink beer. Like but after a hot fucking day of miserable work, there's something special about sitting down and drinking an, an ice cold fucking beer. Yeah. And then maybe having a cigar later. That, yeah. Sure. That, that later that night when it's cooled down a little bit, sit on the patio, smoke a cigar. Yeah. Maybe read a book. Yeah, there's, there's something to that. I just did a fucking smoke ring. Look at that shit. Good. Holy fuck! God damn. What? Fucking loud. What'd I say? Fuck. Oh. So, I agree. Uh, I think there is a lot of tradition, a lot of ceremony involved with smoking a cigar. It's not just, oh, I'm going to go smoke a cigar for the fucking fun of it. I mean, I, I have fun smoking cigars. But I just <laughs> toked a hundred times in this fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> it, it, I heard it go, <laughs> I heard the, the wrapper pop because it got so hot. God damn it. It's bent now. Oh, it cracked. He destroyed his cigar. Fuck. Now you got to smoke it like that now. Uh, no. It's fine. I get over it because I'm not a bitch. Sure. Um, what is... Uh, did you watch the, the tape video I sent you with them smoking cigars? No, I did not And it was them. my my father's... <laughs> what the fuck? It was my... My father's cigar or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, sure. My father's. You heard of that? Yeah. How much are those cigars? I don't know. I don't smoke them. He was like, "It's eighty dollars." That's stupid. Yeah, I was like, "The cigar is probably like eight bucks." You're paying for the name at that point. Our cigars. If you want to know the truth, you can compare our cigars with ones that they will find at fifty fucking dollars. Yeah, sure. What people will, even though we won't sell them for that much. Maybe actually the premium ones might get up in the range of the twenty. Like in the those future, are hard yeah. as fuck to get. Sure, but the 
I, I mean, and that's top of the line. That's like hard, hard as shit to find and mm -hmm. long fermented everything. Yeah. Like top of the line cigars. Sure. Yep. Yeah. So what's next on the list? So we talked about ceremony, you know, tradition with cigars. Let's talk about the psychology behind some of the cigars. Oh man, psychology. Yes. Behind cigars. I don't think there, anyone's ever. There is a psychology. Would you like another cigar? No, that's fine. Okay. I'll, I'll be through that. On the mic, I offered him a replacement. He declined. Uh, so the psychology, there is psychology behind smoking a cigar. It's not just, no. It's, I, I don't think it's similar to smoking a cigarette. Hell no. Fuck no. Cigarettes are addicting, disgusting. No, I mean like the, the what it appeals to cigarette smokers, I don't think it's the same with cigar smokers. Well, okay. So like Norma, what I've, okay. There's two types of cigarette smokers. There's ones that are fucking addicted. And then there's ones that aren't addicted as bad. And I think like if you do smoke cigarettes, it's very rare mm -hmm. that you'll actually get out of that fucking addiction Yeah, sure. to where you never want a cigarette again. You always have to, at some point, at least have one. There's some people that quit t cold turkey forever. Yeah. And those and got, that, holy shit. I don't know. And it's do. always some like fucking ex military, like black coffee, like straight up black coffee and run seven miles in the morning with their fucking thermos type person too. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there, there, there's so many different types of people, but that's always what I find that people they are like, oh yeah, I quit smoking cold turkey. And you're like, damn, that damn dude, my utmost respect to you. Yeah. And so there, there's the two types of cigarette smoker. There's, there's that with the person that was fucking addicted. And then there's a the person that's kind of not. Yeah. And, um, Smokes every now and then, maybe when they drink or something like Mainly that. Mainly when they're like, maybe if like in a stressful situation, they just got Yeah, but yeah, that's what situation. I noticed. Yeah. In a stressful situation, mm. they smoke a cigarette. And I, I honestly, I think it's the addiction that forces that to make you feel better that it's actually helping. Like, kind of like placebo? Yeah. Well, it's more like your body's fucked up and unable to handle stress and it requires the cigarette. And like a cigar is extremely different. It is for one, you're not, you're not taking this in your lungs and two, or if you do, you're a badass. Yeah. I can't fucking do that shit. Don't recommend to try that. No. Cause I mean, there's plenty of tobacco that gets in you from yeah. just breathing it into your mouth. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, cigarettes are so, fucking nasty and meant to be addicting it's like yeah it's awful i think the big thing behind cigars is it, it like i said earlier it forces you to slow down it forces you to take a break for about at least 30 30 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. forces you to sit down and enjoy the cigar it makes helps forces you to take it in you know let's gather our thoughts for a second um yeah, you can smoke a cigar after a stressful day, a stressful situation. Not saying that's only for cigarettes, but usually when it comes to smoking a cigar, you know, you finish your day with it. Sometimes begin your day with a cigar. You. Yeah, me. I begin my day and end my day with a cigar. Yeah, it, just, it starts my day. I drink, I go to the gym, run three miles, come back. I'm kidding. I don't go to the gym and run three so miles. You fucking run three miles. No, fuck no. Um, get up, pour myself some black coffee, sit on the patio when it's not freezing ass fucking cold, and smoke a cigar mm -hmm. because it helps me deal with idiots every fucking day. And then when I come <coughs> home, I either pour me some bourbon or I just grab me a glass of water, go sit on my patio, and smoke a cigar, and it helps me in the day now i think that is that's the same for a lot of people mm -hmm. that smoke cigars it helps them in their day yeah i mean many people they don't they kind of associate cigars with cigarettes and so no, a lot of people don't want to smoke them at all but i would say they're very very beneficial mm -hmm. to um getting some sort of stress reliever yeah sure. and uh, you know a lot of the times even like when you try to do stress relief you don't fucking get any relief like mm -hmm. ever it's you're always, always stressed out and it, it doesn't really go away, but it, the cigar 
oddly enough, kind of subconsciously, um, it takes away stress. Like it's still there, but for some reason your body releases it. So your body doesn't hoard the stress. That's what yeah, I've noticed sure. that like you may not mentally release the stress, but the cigar helps your body release it. It's, it's really it's, interesting. I think it's part of that forcing you to slow down and take a break. Yeah. Maybe. That helps you release it. Did you know that they're also too with COVID with COVID? The C. Yeah, you're not supposed to say that on YouTube. Yeah, I know. YouTube, I, have, I have yeah. to cut that out because they're going to fucking shadow. Yeah. Uh, with the C, phys- sickness, um, <laughs> there was actually the a receptor, a nicotine receptor that um, you get, you know, smoking tobacco, mm-hmm. that it fills that receptor and you're less susceptible to getting it. Mm. It's really strange. And that's apparently why people that smoke cigarettes are less likely to get it, oddly enough. Okay, that's interesting. Very weird. Very, very weird. Very interesting. You know, when, when there's a bioweapon that's that's been introduced, of course, there's going to be so many weird-ass side effects of everything. So Sure, yeah. I, I agree completely. So I see we're supposed to talk, touch on cigar news here, but there's not really any... Yeah, what the fuck is cigar news? There's not really anything there. Um, uh the news of the cigar industry is, is it's still here. Yeah, you hear the crickets? Yeah, that's not really anything nothing, interesting. Nothing we already did the nothing badass new. of the week. Nothing will happen. Nothing new. Uh, let's see. So I feel like he already touched on a social issue earlier. <laughs> you know, going on the rant and speaking the truth that people have become blind fucking idiots on everything. Yeah. So we did that. And now we go into the humorous police stories that you requested. Oh, and I'm going to go ahead and disclose that, you know, I've usually tried to keep my, my stories to myself, but I'm going to let a few slip here. And if you are sensitive, if you are offended easily, well, you probably wouldn't have got this far. Go to the fuck podcast. off. Yeah. Anyways, but you might want to go watch Telly Tubbies or some shit. I mean, there is endless stories from all different angles that we hear. So every, every police officer has probably hundreds of fucking stories. Yeah. So many that you probably even forgot about most of them. The, the issue is, I have, yeah, I have plenty of memories from uh, being in law enforcement, but I seem to remember more of the bad ones than anything. I well, seem to forget the good ones. Well, let me tell you something. Why don't you say some of the good ones? What are good memories that you had in law enforcement? Maybe based on justice being served mm. in a sense that it needed to be served. I have some instant karma stories from when, you know, running traffic stops. Okay, like let's that. hear them. Maybe so, ones that you heard from other people too. And sure. Sure. So my, where I was as deputy, I'm still not going to disclose that because of you know, no plausible deniability. Um, it was situated between Dallas Fort Worth and Lubbock. And uh, we had a major highway that went through our county. Okay. And uh, it was a two lane blacktop highway with an unimproved shoulder or an improved shoulder. They improved it after a while, which uh, improved means you can park a car on it <coughs> and not get destroyed by get, traffic. Not get fucking rear ended yeah. and killed. What? But there's some idiots that see, oh, there's a line of traffic. I'm going to use this improved shoulder to go around everyone. It happened a lot out there, and we had a lot of bad wrecks because of that shit. Mm-hmm. So one day I'm cruising down this highway, running, just rolling 75 miles an hour, which is the speed limit. And I was just cruising, just I can't remember where I was going. But I was going, I can't remember. I was just rolling on the highway at 75 miles an hour. And, okay. you know, naturally, when people see a cop car, they have this phobia of passing, rightfully so. I fucking pass them. I cut people off and then go past the cop. And the cop's like, yeah. Okay, they don't even fuck. care. Well, see, here we go. <laughs> so <laughs> behind me, I had a mile long pile up of cars <laughs> behind me. No one was passing me. His, was it two lane? It was two lane. So you had to wait for a passing uh, area to go around me, which at 75 miles an hour. And you, two miles of fucking cars. Is yeah, kind of impossible. yeah, not going to happen. So I'm cruising. And then I look in my mirror, like my rear view mirror, and I see cars doing this number. 
Oh. Uh, back in traffic. Yeah. What? I touched the end. No. Doing this number, like swerving to avoid something. So I'm like, okay, what the fuck? And it's like a domino effect coming closer to me. Mm-hmm. And I look in my side mirror, and there's this little Hyundai Elantra looking car <laughs> doing about mock cheeses up the fucking under the improved shoulder, mm-hmm. passing everyone. And then they see me and they slam on their brakes like so hard they had to, it swerved a little bit. The car swerved a little bit. As I got next to you, did you swerve over at them and bang them off the road? No, they didn't get next to me. They cut the car off behind me. Like they slipped in between me and the car behind me, mm. cutting them off. And like, I, were they expecting me not to fucking notice that? <laughs> yeah, like because you didn't see that. Yeah, so I slowed everything down to like ten miles an hour just to piss everyone off and then sped yeah. back up. No, what I did is I just got over, let her pass me, and I got back on the car and conducted a traffic stop. And the car that she cut off getting behind me, they knew what was going to happen, but they slowed down mm-hmm. to give me room. And that was some instant karma for that stupid ass. And then when I asked the driver, why were you doing that? Oh, I was in a hurry. So was everyone else. Yeah, so was everyone else. Fuckhead. When they just pass you in the other fucking lane. I don't know. Hmm. We'll take a moment of silence for the stupidness. Yeah, for sure. All right. Okay. For the last remaining brain cells in our head. Um, what's another good one? I'm, I'm running through my archives. Say something while I think. That trooper video we saw a while back <laughs> was fucking hilarious. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, that was pretty good. What was the name of that video? Uh, just look up Connecticut State Trooper. <laughs> uh, that guy should have been awarded the yeah. highest medal. And believe me, there are plen- there's been plenty of times where I wanted to pop off on people like that. But you know what? No. You know what really has become a shithole? It's been a shithole, but really stepped up their game to what? make make their city an even bigger shithole mm-hmm. was Chicago. The new laws and shit. Oh yeah, I just talked to a guy that's from fucking, Chicago, and he's dumbest. He's looking to get the fuck out. There's a there's a couple cops that that buy our cigars from there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a patch from them. It, I mean, it's sad, like to see a major city in the U.S. do yeah, stuff it, like that. It happens. That that city has always been full of crime and corruption and shit. So fucking stupid. Um. Hmm. I'm 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 running my mind here. You know, I feel bad for uh, the law enforcement that's going to deal with that shit. Yeah. I mean, you're. It, it, it's like if if Dallas did that, and we got to watch a place that we grew up in mm-hmm. turn into this major shithole. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's already is. Yeah, it's already like, turning into if that. If it turned into Chicago, dude, oh my god, there would be militias. There really would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's coming too. It, yeah, it probably will. So, maybe it's not really a funny story, but I would like to, you know, every officer <coughs> out there has their little routine when they get off shift. Whenever they go 1042, which out of service, and mm-hmm. which is a bad thing code. I try not to use that. But when they go 10 to 6, you know, busy away from radio or go home, um, the, every officer has their little routine. Okay. To kind of wind down, because if we just go home and lay down immediately, especially night shift, if we just go home and lay down immediately, we're not going to go to fucking sleep. It's not going to happen. So go home, fire a gun into the ceiling. Yeah, no, no, definitely not. Uh, my neighbors would not like that. Um, so what I would do is my sheriff's office who was right across the street from the courthouse, which the courthouse was built way back in the day along with the sheriff's office. Sheriff's office is built back in like the 40s, 50s, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Very old school. It's, it was so old, it was built in the day where the sheriff or the jailer still lived in the sheriff's office. Damn. Yeah. And... Ignore it. This is going to be a new segment called Disrespect on the Cigar. Well, goddamn, the thing's breaking apart. Well, yeah, because you fucking... 
All right, go ahead. It doesn't matter. The binder is still good. Yeah. Um, so what I would do is I'd go at, at the end of every shift, I'd go into the office, do my, you know, reports, everything that needed to be done before I would go home. And then my sheriff, because, you know, didn't care if I smoked cigars on, on shift or at work. So Did we you say you, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, I, I'll enlighten you. I'll enlighten them on that in a second. All right. So what I would do after I finished up all my reports, did everything I needed to do, I would go sit on the little red chair on our front on our whole patio. It like over it looked at the courthouse. I could watch okay, the courthouse. This is at the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And I would just go sit up there and smoke a cigar, you know, seven in the morning. Mm -hmm. And no one's out. It's that right time of day where the night critters are going to bed and the day critters haven't woken up yet. Mm -hmm. So it's completely silent. Okay. And it's just there's like a there's a odd tranquility to it, mm -hmm. and that would help me wind down. Then Be I would drive peaceful home. old days. Yeah, and I would drive home and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, that it goes back to the psychology of a cigar. It helps people wind down. Yeah, because like I said, it forces you to slow down and take it in. That's true, and it it really helped. So what he was about to say was my sheriff, uh, he uh, was very cigar friendly and uh, did not care if we'd smoked a cigar in the office. Anywhere. <laughs> Anywhere. Well, I was going to talk about the squad car. Yo, oh, yeah, in the squad car, too. <laughs> there were plenty of times where we did would. Did he say like he smoked a cigar in there and he did it to mess with one of the other sheriffs or the or, or your sheriff or something like that. And he got it. He was like, God damn. Yeah. I like freight trained it. <laughs> it was, I was going to pick him up. So he wanted to come ride with me for a little bit. And I like freight trained a cigar with the windows up. And uh, I pull up in front of his house and he opens the door and a, like a mushroom cloud of smoke <laughs> bellows out. And he goes, Holy shit. <laughs> that, that was fantastic. But so he would allow us to smoke cigars in the office and <coughs> I was doing my reports one day and he, he just came into the office early one morning mm -hmm. and I had to go take a shit. And so I, I didn't want to put my cigar down. So I took the cigar and the shitter with me. <laughs> and so I had the bathroom. I was in the bathroom doing my business, smoking a cigar. Well, I didn't know that there was smoke bellowing out from underneath <laughs> the bathroom door. And I hear my sheriff walk in and I hear him walk by the bathroom. He goes, are you smoking a cigar in there? <laughs> yeah. He goes, all right. <laughs> Jeez. So I, uh, we didn't have an exhaust fan in there either. So it was just stagnant mm -hmm. in there. It was fantastic. God, yeah. a mixture of that. <laughs> <laughs> the shit smell and the smoke. God. Oh man, you just smoke one of the most like stoutest, darkest, like fermented cigar. There was one you were smoking that one time, and I want to throw the fuck <laughs> up. It was so bad. <laughs> I don't know what the hell. Uh, that the was. Esteban Carrera Chupacabra. Oh yeah, god, I that. Smell, dude, I yeah. was smelling it, and I was like, that shit gave me a headache. Like I felt I was going to throw up just smelling that. Uh, what are you going? So bad. What are you going to do? Oh. Well. But yeah, so that's a few funny stories from a law enforcement <laughs> career. You're like, that's a, this is a damn good cigar. I'm like, can you throw that fucking <laughs> thing out? I think out? I did. Like, yeah, you did throw it out. Yeah. But I mean, you were almost done. And I was like, can you throw that fucking thing out? And you're like, it's a damn good cigar. It, it was a good fucking cigar. It smelled thing. fucking horrendous. Yeah, well. It's like they, whatever. I don't even know. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. You just describe it. It was like vinegar and shit mixed together. That's awesome. Jeez. I'll tell you what, those little heaters did the trick, didn't they? It feels good in here now. They, they helped. You know, a lot better than when I first walked in here. I was like, fuck, when I realized the heater was off. really fucking cold. Yeah. This morning, I walked out, and I'm like, holy mm -hmm. shit. What was it? It was like 15 degrees this morning. Yeah, pretty, pretty fucking miserable. But and, and what sucks too is like the ground has humidity in it or something, and it's releasing it. The moisture. From yeah, it, and yeah. so you walk outside with 60 percent fucking humidity and 15 degrees, and you're just like walking in ice water. Mm -hmm. It's fucking horrible. So that's one thing I want to touch on is 
You know, we grew up in Dallas. Mm -hmm. It's been cold before. Plenty of times, yeah. Why the fuck are people freaking out so bad over this? Because nobody here has lived here. They're all from California now. There we go. They're from other places now. Everyone that originally grew up here, there's not very many of them. There's no. still some. Everyone has left. Mm -hmm. Nobody lives here anymore. They all went to Florida. And um, it seems that they all went to Ohio, too. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, that too. And Utah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of all places. Um, I, I looked it up yesterday. You know what the coldest recorded temperature in Texas was? What? Negative 20. <clears throat> <clears throat> Fuck. I mean, I could see like Amarillo getting that. Yeah, I can't remember where it was, but negative 20. When it's supposed to get negative here? Yeah. When it's supposed to get like negative five? Allegedly, yeah, with the wind chill. Yeah. But negative 20. You know what the hottest recorded day was? 120. That it's been a, way fucking hotter. That was that. in Seymour, Texas, where it recorded that. Can't remember the year, but I remember, I think it was the negative 20 was recorded in, 18, in the 18, late 1800s. Damn. So it's being colder. Quit freaking the fuck out. So I remember my dad saying back in the 70s or 80s when he was out here, he, uh, he said that it was so fucking cold once out here and it was cold for weeks and he said it snowed like quite a bit and he said it was so cold that lake ray hubbard was frozen and people were driving on it yeah frozen solid yeah yeah people were driving and doing donuts on the lake yeah i remember my dad talking about that people were yeah. out there walking on it driving on it and yeah he said that people were out there in the freaking 80s yeah so it's and been, it's and it hasn't been that cold our entire yeah, life ray here. hubbard is still not frozen out yeah never it never has I mean, I've seen, some, I've seen like a thin layer on it. But. Yeah, well, on the outside, but in the deeper spots, it never did. No, but enough. in that in that time, it was frozen completely. Yeah. It was frozen completely. Like, yeah. I've never seen a frozen lake before. I also want to touch on another thing. All the people that have moved here, did you not fucking research this state before you moved here? Did you not research the state no, of Texas they, before you moved here? No. They were programmed by society because Texas is a threat to you know what? They were programmed by society over there to move over here and mm. fuck it up. Mm. And I, I got a California coworker who was retarded like that. And she's like, why do you, how do I know how y'all stand in here? And I'm like, why the fuck are you here? Yeah, no shit. Go back home. Why man. are you here? Fuck and then she's like, she's like talking about some law that was over there. And they're like, yeah, we need to bring the same people that did the laws over there over to here. No. And I'm like, <laughs> don't Jesus. do that. Like, this is what's fucking it up. This place was good. And now it's a shithole because of that. <sighs> fucking, and you know, Nicole, she's from California and it's driving her fucking crazy seeing this shit go. Dude, it's, she said she, she moved here to get away from that bullshit. You know, there, there was a couple weeks ago, um, I, I saw something about a couple got married in California and they went to this church mm -hmm. somewhere in Los Angeles to, to get like pictures for their wedding and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, one of the camera guys, some dude tried to steal his shit while they were taking pictures for the wedding. Some guy walked up and the guy, you know, they got in an altercation. The guy left. Of course. 20 minutes later, another guy comes by and steals the shit. You got it. Fuck, yeah. dude. It's fucking amazing. Oh, and then at my work, someone stole that fucking crock pot. Jeez, off the porch. A crock three, pot. Three minutes after she put it there. She literally sat it there, walked inside. Three minutes later, some homeless guy walks up and walks off with it. And then she comes out and is like, what the fuck? Like, what is he going to fucking do I with a crock pot? Plug it on the dart station. <laughs> going to cook some food on the dart bus. That you stole from Target? <laughs> I don't know. She was like, it's like a $20 crock pot. I was like, go to Ledbetter and go to the pawn shop down there. You'll fucking find it. <laughs> it's just unfucking real Yeah, it's just, it, it's insane. Like, there's just so much bullshit. And, and really, like... When you're putting all this money into stupid shit, which half of it goes into the politician's pocket. So that, that little bit of remaining money that they don't fucking do anything with, but got trillions of dollars of fucking city assets and they do nothing with it. You, you could at least like try to make some programs to change the lives of the homeless people to get them to like get the fuck off the street and maybe work to improve their life rather than. Yeah. Walking around in a circle, stealing people's fucking crock pots. Like, 
Yeah, nothing's done about it. No, dude. And then you got people that want to enable them, such as buying them prepaid debit cards and yeah, you know, putting them up in hotels. They go. There's this. There's this one guy in Rally that that they keep enabling. They buy them prepaid debit cards. They keep buying them shoes. They they'll buy him a pair of shoes. He'll magically lose them. I think it's more. And then comes back and says, "Hey, I don't have any shoes," and then buy them some more. There's that one family that always begs for money. Do you remember that? There was there was a certain fit. Over at the, the corner, guy would come out with his wife and his kid, and he'd yeah. beg on the corner and say they're homeless. At the corner of Dar Rock and we fucking Lake did that View. shit for like three years mm-hmm. out in um, everywhere. I, and I remember there being a post about it, like these people are scammers. Don't mm-hmm. don't give them money. Well, they disappeared for a while. Mm-hmm. I never saw them again. And then I saw them in Murphy. Yep. So they're out there, and I remember them driving a Mercedes. Yeah, a black Mercedes. Yeah, they yeah. drove a Mercedes, and it, it's just amazing. It's amazing that, you know, like people are generous, but when put on the spot, they're pussies, and then they're generous. Like, no, yeah. ignore these fucking idiots. Go find a charity that you like and donate to them sure. so that they can help the people. Don't directly give the drug addict fucking money for drugs. You go and you help the people. And what's bad is that family, they're not even drug addicts. They're not. They're just yeah, that's fucking how they, gypsies. That's, that's, that's how, how they, they make are. their income. There was uh, my, my stepdad, Ray. He, uh, he was in the circus. And uh, mm-hmm. he said people in the circus would go and beg corners when they'd work the town because they'd make like $1,000 a day doing it. That's insane, dude. Yeah. They make like a fucking $800 to $1,000 per, per day. Begging on the corner. Fuck. Yeah. But then they'll go blow it on dope. Pretty much. Thousand dollars a day. You could beg for two days and have enough money to yeah, you got so you got, go buy yourself a cheap ass car. A, a and, week you would make someone's monthly income. Yeah, go buy yourself a cheap ass car, get a fucking legal job, and there you go. You can even go get yourself like a cheap ass apartment for that much money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you beg for beg for five days, make five grand, buy a car, get an apartment, and then go find a fucking job. That's infuriating. That oh fuck. I don't know. I mean, there's so much shit. Yeah, and it kind of sucks. Like you know, being interested in that stuff because then you see all that shit. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, you want to know who the people who deal with that shit every fucking day for you. Guess Law who? enforcement. Guess who? Guess who? Right here. Right oh, here. All these. Them too. Right here. Right there. They deal with that shit. They deal with that bullshit every fucking day, all day, every day. And then they get told they're the fucking problem. Yes. They get shit on it every fucking day to deal with your fucking problems. So I'm going to rant a little bit all right, uh, please about your domestic please comment earlier. Basically, you. Get, that not you. There's some people out there that cannot handle their fucking adult problems. Let us bitch. Yes. There's some people out there that cannot handle their fucking adult problems. So, because they can't figure it out, the babysitters mm-hmm. get called and the badge and the uniform. They show up to try and resolve the situation, keep it from becoming violent. And then some selfish fucking piece of shit wants to try and kill them for trying to resolve the situation. Because you're not a big enough fucking adult to handle it yourself. Grow the fuck up. Quit being a pussy little bitch. Agreed. You know, like, when you, when you look at uh, a lot of people that are very successful, they all say the same shit. Just fucking try. Just try to do better and it will, you know, the money comes, everything comes like try to do something. Don't blame everyone else for the fuck their, your situation. Like you, anything that goes on in your life, you built yourself to that point. There is shitty hands that happen yes. that people get dealt and you play those fucking cards and you find ways to get around that. I've had some shitty fucking hands. Travis has had some shitty hands. Mm. Seriously, 
There, there's people that haven't had shit happen to them their whole fucking life. Someone stole their bike when they were a little kid. That's the only bad thing that's and ever happened. And they want to play the victim for the rest of their fucking life. And they want to fucking tell everyone how bad it was that their bike was stolen when they were eight yeah. fucking years old. People have had a silver spoon shut with their ass their entire life, and they want to complain about how hard it's been. Yeah. And it's like, you haven't experienced shit. And I think it's those hard times that, that give you the desire to want to do better in your life. And then yeah. some people, they don't adopt that. They're told, oh, well, it's a shitty hand. Just bitch about it. There's nothing you can ever do about it. Go to college. See, I'm one of those people. If I have a shit hand dealt to me, and I've had plenty, I want to fix it. Yeah. I want to make it better. I'll bitch about it after I've fixed it. Yeah. Because I'm not going to bitch about it and expect someone to fix it for me because it's not going to happen. No one's going to fix it for you. You've got to do it yourself. Exactly. The city's not going to do it for you. Fucking Beto's not going to do it for you. None of those people are. And, you know, I heard something. Um, so this is something that we, we all can agree on, regardless of your stance on religion or anything. Sure. The, the practices of, of, of basing morals off of religion, you know, not stealing, not mm -hmm. that type of thing, that, that kind of built this country in a certain way and gave us good principles. Um, it's... It's changed so much to where we don't have those values or morals anymore. Yeah. And it's like, even if you don't care for religion, it's still built a good foundation for things. And that, that's, that's something that a lot of men have lost is like moral principles, things like yeah. that. And it's like, I mean, all you got to be is just a fucking good person. Like, that's it. Just be honest. Yeah. You know, it's speaking of religion. I know that not all religious people are like this, but I want to call out the people that hide behind religion, that they're pieces of fucking shit, but they use religion to blanket what they do. Yeah. Oh, I go to church every day. That gives me the right to go out and fuck around, and steal and rob people every fucking day mm -hmm. because I go to church and I'm forgiven afterwards, right? Yeah. It's not how it fucking works. For the record, I'm religious, but... I, I will say it, it doesn't work like that. And it, it doesn't. And, and many people are, are programmed to believe that, that it, it's, I don't know. There, there's always like a level of forgiveness and then there's a level where you're just fucking milking it. And some people need to, to realize that stuff. But then again, like half, like most people aren't really just now. Nobody, nobody gets that. Nobody wants to yeah, like, deal with that or anything like that. Like, I believe. Okay, I believe. I'm not some atheist motherfucker out there. I, I believe in shit. But I don't know. I just, I just think viewing... See, what really made me, like, brought me closer to that thing is the fact that there's so much fucking evil. Oh, yeah. There's like, wicked people everywhere. And, and when, you, when you finally, like, start to study, like, the Bible and things, like, you start to see that, like, the evil they're doing is what's in the Bible. And you're like, wow. Like it really, it just starts to click. And it's like, this is a, this is a spiritual like battle on everything. Yeah. And it's just, it's wild. A bunch it's, of deceitful pieces of shit out there right now. Yeah. It's wild. And there's a lot of people that say they're Christian and they're not, or they say they're Muslim. They say they are because it feel, they feel like they can hide behind it. Yeah. Which is, but I mean, that's, that's like a huge problem with, with that is you want to take away those values and, and I mean, look at, look what it's done in a perfect world. Guns wouldn't need to exist in a perfect world. We wouldn't need police officers, but we don't live in a perfect world. No, we live in a shithole. The, the cities, they suck. Um, Oh, believe me, there's some little towns out there that <laughs> yeah, are I'm fucking sure. shitholes. Yeah, there's some Far Cry 5 I've dealt towns. with them. There's some hills have eyes fucking towns out there. <laughs> yeah. I've dealt with them. But, I mean, really just, just make the best of it and you can't fucking change anything unless you really, really try, unless you're really motivated to do so. But some, some people, that, that drags them into that negative. It drags mm -hmm. them into that hell hole that you get into with the depression and all that. Everything's fucked and, you yeah. know. And so it's, it's best if, you know, if you can't directly change it, don't let it drag you into it. See, I kind of jumped around. I have this kind of fucked up, cruel view on things 
when I hear someone bitching about an issue that they have, and they have a way to fix it, but they won't fix it. Yeah. I tell them, if you're not going to fix the problem, don't bitch about it. That's true. Especially when you have the opportunity and the ability to fix that problem. A lot of people are just fucking lazy. I think it is. I think it's the victim mentality mm-hmm. that has taken people over because they they want everyone to feel sorry for them. When the only one feeling sorry for you is yourself. Yep. And sometimes people get in shitty situations. Yeah, and absolutely. It, and it varies, but that's that's uh, that's like a a social issue mm-hmm. with things too, is because you know knowing when someone's in a shitty situation and you know, knowing when to help someone in a shitty situation, you know, things like that. And it's, it's, it's difficult to tell if they've just fabricated that, Mm -hmm. that they're in that shitty situation, like the certain someone we had lunch with. Yeah. They got themselves into it. Yeah. Yeah. And they fabricated that it wasn't their fault. Yeah. But that's society. No one, there's no accountability anymore. Nope. Nope. That's part of the religious principles. You've got to have accountability for your actions. And don't get me wrong. I'm no saint. I've done some fucked up shit in my past. I've okay, heard a lot of people on. in my past. Hold on. You got to understand what's fucked up to do as a person between me and you is way the fuck higher than you would meet someone else in a shitty part of society. Because when you say that you've done a lot of fucked up shit, do you mean killing people? Do you mean selling children to trafficking? No. Do you Exactly. So it's just fucked up things as like, like you just weren't good to someone, you know, you weren't, you know, things like that. So it's like, don't, don't judge and say that you were fucked up. You did, you did some wrong things. Yeah. Right. Cause when you say it to the extreme of that, no one really knows what you mean by that. Did you rob a bank? I've done, kill some, someone? I've done you... some things that are not acceptable to some people. Yeah. And cause that seems the things that we would do that we would think are horrible to do are very mild to some other people. Like that type of shit. Yeah. And, you know, but it's everyone. No one's perfect. If anyone ever tells you they've never done anything wrong, they're a fucking liar. Yep. So much shit in the world. And really, you just got to worry about yep. how to improve your situation and how to get your life better. Mm-hmm. It's okay to care about your friends and family. But. But just because somebody was misgendered or something, it doesn't mean that you need to go say the whole fucking world's injustice and all this stuff. Like it just, none of that shit matters. None of that matters. Nothing. And that's, what's going to lead this country down the shitter. And then eventually none of us are going to have a country. Yep. We're going to be in a fucking war zone. And then everyone's going to be like, wow, you know, I really miss that time. When we didn't give a fuck about certain things and uh, Mm -hmm. when that wasn't an issue and it didn't cause society to collapse. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's inevitable though. Yeah, it's going to happen. The cigar has about fucking had it, but it's still good. I was going to ask you, was it good? It smokes great. It still smokes good. I'm just saying, look at that shit. Delicious. Good thing. It's fucked. It looks like Dallas. Go ahead and disclose why, how you fucked it up. Tell, tell. I have a mic up here. I I incinerated it, okay? I, I kept smoking it, and then it split. <laughs> if, you, if you looked about like 15, 20 minutes ago, I toked it <laughs> at least 30 times. <laughs> causing, <laughs> caused it to fucking split. It, as soon it as caused I was it there, to fucking explode, yeah. It got too hot and expanded and broke the wrapper. It's also fucking like 40 degrees in here. Mm-hmm. So, hey, it could be worse. It could be. We have it two could, heaters. It, it going could in be here. five degrees in here. Yeah, he's got a propane heater going and an electric heater behind us. Yeah. And it's still like 40 degrees in here. Texas got really cold. It's fine. Like, I don't, there's no wind or anything. I'm, do you hear me bitching about it? No. no, but I'm saying that the cigar didn't like that. No, of course. Well, tobacco is not going to like that. Yeah. Because the center's hot. And then the outer wrapper is cold Mm -hmm. and it couldn't expand with it and it split because I I made it super hot by toking it too much. It's also very dry out and cigars do not like dry weather. That's true. Oh, 
I hope uh, our social issue bitching, I know nobody, everyone that watches this, the few people that do, they don't give a fuck. Like they, they understand completely. Well, you know, and normally we have kind of a comical, just kind of not give a shit vibe. But today I feel like we hit on some pretty serious subjects. We were actually following, we actually dove into yeah. a few things. Well, that's good. I mean, people need to hear it. And uh, I just want to say to for the law enforcement officers and the other people that are good members of society that care, um, you know, we understand. Like that's, that's our stance on a lot of things. And, um, you know, you could get way more political, but I feel like polit politics are just leading down a road of bullshit. Yeah. Both sides, both sides lead down a rabbit hole of shit. that's meant to funnel you into divide and conquer and division and all that shit. And really we should be focusing on, uh, the fact that we're going to lose our country. Eventually. Yeah. Regardless of what side you're on. They're dividing us. They're dividing this fucking country in every way possible. Yeah. And nobody really knows who. You can guess. Nobody truly knows who, even though you really get some hints. And, uh, but there's so many different rabbit holes that you can dig in. You can say it's communist. You can say it's internal. You can say it's all these different things. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows. But we need to become aware of it. And it needs to be something that people talk about. and have a uh, solid stance on instead of not really knowing and nobody really knows and you have nothing to back it up. You can't talk to people about it because you can't fucking back up anything you say. So that's why you need to be educated and solid on this thing, on this subject so that mm -hmm. you can let that spread and let people know that we won't have a future if things continue to do this, if ways. Yes, and there's a song by tool that speaks the honest to god truth about humanity it's called right into you need to go listen to that song and it talks about how humans have had this really long track record of wanting to split everything up they want to fight over everything mm -hmm. we can never just coexist with one another they always want to divide shit you know we talked about that back in a few months ago where you remember you 9-11 Everyone was nice as shit after that. Mm -hmm. Everyone cared about each other. Everyone did things to yeah, help each other. Could you imagine, imagine how much better this world would be if we cared about one another, yeah. if we cared about our neighbor still and everything and, and like how much, like we lost that principle. Yes, we did. And it's kind of sad. It is the, everyone became selfish. It's all about me, 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 me now. Oh, yeah. How can I better myself at and, the expense and, of you? And some people play into that agenda for their benefit. Yeah. Like they, they go and they start shit for their benefit. And it's. Yeah. Fuck those people. It's disgusting. It's despicable. Fucking putrid. It's despicable. All right. So let's go ahead and shoot some shorts. Okay. I feel like we talked on a serious matter. Touched. Mm -hmm. I wrote, said tucked. Touched. Now we need to do some stupid shit. Yeah, let's do some stupid shit to liven the mood. Yes. All right. Here we go. Get me out of here. Stupid shit commencing in five, four, three, two. Stupid. Fucking disgusting goddamn piece of fucking shit. We're going to test the mics this time to make sure they work. Is your shit on? Testing one, two, three, four, airport shithole cocksucker. Testing the mics. Five. Four, three, two, one. Ah! The force can do this type of operation in 45 seconds. With our athletic superiority, we can do it in about 20. Oh. Are you recording? Yes. All right. I'm fucking disgusting. Pathetic. Ooh, fucking piece of shit. I'm writing a book. You are? Yep. About what? How pathetic I am. It's not a very good book. So, let's talk about some things. The didgeridoo is a weapon. Is what tells me what to do every day. Okay. I speak. Through the didgeridoo. 
<laughs> Watch. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in on the podcast. We appreciate your support. <coughs> Sorry. Thanks for watching our podcast. Thank you. What the fuck is in that smoke? Why was that so stout? My eyes are watering, bro. Is there a fucking mace in it? I'm doing it again. Jesus. It's like a <coughs> yellow. God. <laughs> Why is it so stout? I don't fucking know. Oh, dude, that's burning my eyes. What the fuck? So from the, what was it? The Cigars of Our Studios. Oh, oh fuck. What the Damn. fuck is in that cigar? <laughs> What'd you put on the end of it? I don't know. It was some shit I picked up off a guy off the corner. Oh. Oh. All right. Anyways, what were we doing? I don't even know anymore. Fine. Thank you for tuning in to the podcast. We appreciate your support. And uh, thank you for getting our cigars as well. I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We'll be recording next week. So see you guys next week. Yep. Look at you. Look at you with all your muscles. Look. Look at you. Thanks for coming to the channel. I'm glad to see you here. If you want to watch some good podcasts and actually laugh and talk about real shit, 